know thyself. These two words, echoing through the corridors of history, carry the essence of a man who defied convention, challenging the very fabric of his time. As he walked the cobbled streets of ancient Athens, amidst the clamor of the marketplace and the vibrant discussions of the city, there existed a figure unlike any other, a figure whose intellectual prowess and unwavering quest for truth would etch his name into the annals of human thought. Socrates, the enigmatic philosopher, whose relentless pursuit of wisdom would become the cornerstone of Western philosophy. His method of inquiry, the Socratic method, not only questioned assumptions, but turned the gaze of introspection upon oneself. But who was this man whose very existence inspired the young minds of his time? Beyond the parables and dialogues lay a life marked by resilience, unyielding in the face of societal norms and beliefs. Born circa 47 BCE and passing away in 399 BCE, Socrates hailed from a modest background. His father, Sophroniscus, worked as a stonecutter and a sculptor, known for his artistry. His mother, Phenorite, was a midwife. Despite their professions, they managed to provide for Socrates basic education and upbringing. As a young man, Socrates learned the craft of stone cutting and sculpture, honing his skills akin to his father. He became adept at crafting statues, gaining recognition for his craftsmanship. Legend spoke of a sculpture, The Three Graces, attributed to Socrates adorning the Acropolis, showcasing his early talent and artistic abilities. Socrates was famously described as unattractive, with a flat nose, bulging eyes, and a portly figure. His indifference to appearances and material pleasures extended to his personal grooming. He cared little for hygiene, often going without bathing, walking barefoot, and possessing only a single worn-out coat, much to the jest of his friends. Socrates' valor shone during the Peloponnesian War, serving as an Athenian hoplite. Renowned for his courage, he notably saved the life of Alcibiades, a prominent Athenian general, during the Battle of Potidaea. His fearless conduct was evident in the subsequent battles at Amphipolis and Delium, earning him recognition and respect throughout Athens. These experiences on the battlefield deeply influenced his philosophical musings on ethics, duty, and the nature of courage. Socrates believed that true knowledge lay not in certainty but in questioning. Curiously, amidst the great minds of his time, Socrates left no written records of his own. He entrusted his philosophy to the spoken word, engaging in conversations that echoed through time, preserved by his students like Plato and Xenophon. Socrates revolutionized philosophy, unlike the great thinkers before him like Thales, Anaximander, and Anaximenes who focused on physical science and the world around them, Socrates shifted the focus to human beings and the abstract realms of ethics and morality. This profound change in perspective is likely why he is considered the father of philosophy. He believed that no one does wrong voluntarily. Evil is the result of ignorance. If people knew what was the right thing to do, they would do it. We always choose what we think is the best or good for us. Central to Socrates, philosophy was the art of dialogue, encapsulated in what is famously known as the Socratic method. Through conversations captured vividly in the works of Plato and Xenophon, Socrates didn't claim to possess knowledge, but instead sought to ignite the spark of inquiry within others. The only true wisdom is in knowing you know nothing, declared Socrates, a sentiment echoing the humility at the core of his teachings. This paradoxical wisdom reflected his belief in acknowledging one's ignorance, the foundational step toward genuine understanding. Legend has it that the Oracle of Delphi proclaimed Socrates to be the wisest man in Athens. Perplexed by this proclamation, Socrates, driven by his relentless pursuit of truth, embarked on a quest to test the Oracle's statement. His interactions with various individuals in Athens led him to realize that while others claimed wisdom, he alone recognized his ignorance. Thus, the Oracle's cryptic proclamation revealed the essence of Socrates' philosophy. In Plato's Apology, we witness Socrates' unwavering commitment to truth and virtue, even at the cost of his own life. Condemned to death for allegedly corrupting the youth and impiety, Socrates refused to abandon his principles. This unwavering stance exemplified his dedication to questioning, introspection, and moral integrity. Xenophon, in his memorabilia, portrayed Socrates as a man who engaged with individuals from all walks of life. 
his method wasn't confined to the elites, but was a tool for everyone to seek wisdom. In the bustling streets of Athens, Socrates would converse with politicians, artisans, and youth, questioning assumptions and encouraging self-reflection. In his teachings, Socrates emphasized the importance of virtue and self-awareness. For instance, he famously asserted that an unexamined life is not worth living, urging individuals to introspect and question their own beliefs and actions. He highlighted the necessity of moral integrity, advocating for justice, wisdom, and courage as pillars of virtuous life. Furthermore, Socrates taught through his method of questioning. For instance, in discussing justice, he would engage others in a series of dialogues, unraveling their assumptions and guiding them to reconsider their notions of morality and ethics. He famously questioned the meaning of concepts like courage, friendship and piety, urging individuals to delve beyond mere definitions and explore the underlying truths. Plato's Republic delves into Socrates' discussions on justice, exploring the nature of the ideal society and the virtues of its citizens. Through allegories like the cave, Socrates illustrated the journey from ignorance to enlightenment, emphasizing the importance of philosophical inquiry and education. In Plato's Phaedo, we encounter Socrates' thoughts on the immortality of the soul. He urged his followers to free themselves from the fear of death by cultivating wisdom and leading a life of virtue, believing that the pursuit of knowledge allowed the soul to transcend mortality. Although democracy first originated from the ancient city of Athens, Socrates, an Athenian, wasn't very fond of the democratic method to govern. In Book 6 of Plato's Republic, in the context of damning appraisal of the way the democracy at Athens works, Socrates compares the Athenian state to a ship. The owner of the ship, he says, is big and strong, but he is hard of hearing, short-sighted, and not much of a navigator. The ship's crew are in persistent disarray. They recklessly go themselves on the ship's resources, while disagreeing with one another about who should be in charge on board, with each sailor believing he should be the captain, despite having neither experience nor training. In this analogy, the citizen population of Athens are the owners of the ship. In Plato's candid assessment, they are politically powerful but lacking in governmental acumen and intellectual ability. With them in charge, the Athenian ship is not going to cut a clear, sensible or efficient path. In the context of our modern world, Socrates may be alluding to the notion that participation in elections requires familiarity with the necessary skills and knowledge. Only those possessing adequate expertise should have the opportunity to shape the destiny of the nation. The fact that anyone could vote would lead to a system that Greeks despise and fear, demagoguery. Socrates believed in his convictions for a purpose, to prevent candidates from manipulating the populace to seize undeserved power. He illustrates his idea with examples. Consider two candidates, one a doctor and the other a candy shop owner. The doctor may assert, I might administer bitter medicine and perform painful surgeries, but all for your well-being. Conversely, the candy shop owner might promise, I'll provide delicious treats, elevating your mood and bringing satisfaction. While those knowledgeable might discern the better candidate, what about the majority? Socrates' argument certainly holds weight here. There is one good knowledge and one evil ignorance, thus spoke the anti-democratic Socrates. Education is the best hope for a democracy. A population which understands the traits needed in a leader knows the difference between a con artist and a legitimate leader and knows which path forward to take. Men of Athens, I honor and love you, but I shall obey God rather than you. And while I have life and strength, I shall never cease from the practice and teaching of philosophy. He reportedly says to his jurors, if his teaching about the nature of virtue corrupts the youth, I am a mischievous person. According to Plato, he would rather be put to death than give up his soul saving. If Plato's account is accurate, the jury knew that the only way to stop Socrates from lecturing about the moral weaknesses of Athenian was to kill him. 
Throughout his life, Socrates wandered the bustling streets of Athens, fervently seeking opportunities to impart wisdom or gain knowledge from those around him. This proud yet humble philosopher remained steadfast in his unconventional lifestyle and unyielding methods, even the shadow of mortality. Due to his unique character, it's no surprise that Socrates garnered a devoted following, particularly among the youth, including his esteemed student Plato. However, his unorthodox ideas also earned him vehement detractors who couldn't bear the mere thought of his existence. People began to awaken and acquire knowledge thanks to his efforts. This spelled trouble for those in power, as you can't easily control an enlightened populace. Hence, the leader's best course of action was to eliminate Socrates from the equation. After dragging him into court, the Athenian, in their misguided judgment, accused the philosopher of corrupting the youth and impiety, alleging that he introduced new deities to supplant the traditional ones. Through the art of argumentation, which Socrates is a master in that regard, of course, he could easily defend himself. He didn't beg or cry for mercy, as he believed these tactics were beneath him. However, after it was said and done, it was time to vote to decide his fate. The jury found Socrates guilty on a relatively close vote of 280 to 220. Socrates' last words to his companions in court as it follows. But you also must regard death hopefully and must bear in mind this one truth, that no evil can come to a good man, either in life or after death, and God does not neglect him. So too, this which had come to me has not come by chance, but I see plainly that it was better for me to die now and be freed from troubles. That is the reason why the sign never interfered with me, and I am not at all angry with those who condemned me or with my accusers. And yet, it was not with that in view that they condemned and accused me, but because they thought to injure me. They deserve blame for that. However, I make this request of you. When my sons grow up, gentlemen, punish them by troubling them as I have troubled you, if they seem to you to care for money or anything else more than for virtue. And if they think they amount to something when they do not rebuke them, as I have rebuked you, because they do not care for what they ought, and think they amount to something when they are worth nothing. If you do this, both I and my sons shall have received just treatment from you. But now the time has come to go away. I go to die and you to live. But which of us goes to the better lot is known to none but the God. 